to talk about the idea of building your toolbox or your glossary or your index. Basically what I'm talking about here is when you actually learn something on the piano, it could be a little bass riff, could be a, a chord inversion that you've never tried before, could be a great little jazz lick you've heard on a, on a solo. The idea is to really learn that thing inside out so you understand um, the theory behind it and um, so you can actually replicate it in any other context. Yeah, so I'm going to show you three techniques that I've picked up out of ra some random songs. A bass one, a chord one, and a melodic line. So what I'll do is I'll put a link in the descriptions below if you do want to check out the, the original songs that I picked up these ideas from. I'll look at a bass riff first. This is Chameleon by Herbie Hancock. <laughs> So that's a really cool little bass riff that went from the one chord to the four chord. The main thing I worked out here is, okay, so we're building up from the six of the scale into the flat seven, major seven, into the tonic. So it was that chromatic movement, but from the six. So once I kind of internalized that little technique, I started applying it to uh, lots of little funky charts I've done. Here's a version of Royals that I did with a singer. This is accompaniment style, so I'm not doing the melody for this one, but um, yeah, for those who don't know Royals, it's a, a really popular song by Lord, and it goes, um, Never be royal, da -na 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 -na, that kind of thing. So we did this sort of funky version where it was a bit more like... line coming back into the tonic was all inspired from that idea of um, coming up from the six which I learnt in Chameleon. So this is the six of the key of D. Obviously different rhythm, different genre but and I'm filling it out with the octaves too to make it work in that context. And yeah, if I'm doing an accompaniment with a funk song, I'll chuck that in um, a lot. So, you know, use a, a C to F progression in um, something like Some Kind of Wonderful. Uh, I like to do the Joss Stone version. do it that much but I'm just showing you to give you an example there. So there's a direct example where I've learnt something in one song and I've applied the overall concept of coming up from the six um, into another song. Okay let's talk about a chord concept I picked up. A great song that I love is Cosmic Girl by Jamiroquai. It's got such a cool groove. It's got a great melodic hook to it. Uh, really, really enjoyable song if you haven't heard it. Uh, so it starts with this comping riff which is quite offbeat and, um, and interesting. So I'll show you what I mean. So, and that's in when the groove kicks in, it's sort of um, a 2 5 1 in E minor. I'm just adding a little, a different inversion on the second time uh, just to create a bit more variation there. So I really love that little comping pattern, and I like to use that when I'm jamming out on a, uh, on a funk tune like um, Superstition, we do in our band all the time. Obviously, as the keys player, I'm doing that clav riff. Sorry, it doesn't sound very clavy on piano. 
Um, but when we break out into solos, I stop playing that clav riff and I do more of a comp thing where I might be E flat minor 7. And I might comp that. And when I want to build the comping, I will start doing that little idea from Cosmic Girl. do that underneath the, the solos um, that people are doing over superstition. So how I worked that out, I looked at the first comping chord and I went, okay, so we're on the fifth of the root. I'm basically doing a second inversion major chord. And then I'm doing a second inversion major chord, a tone up. So I'm thinking of it as A major there. And then I'll do a second inversion minor chord, so in this case C minor. So I'm kind of following this bottom note, going up tone wise, and I'm just making sort of the triads on top. So when I go to superstition, which we play in E flat, again I'm starting on the fifth, and I go tone, tone. I know I'm building my chords off there, so that major, major, and then a minor off that chord, the B minor, and that's how I'm. I've, that's how I've worked it out on one key and to another. So next time my band's funking out in F, I'll just go cool. And I haven't played this in F, by the way. That's why I thought of it. I'm going to go off the fifth. I'm going to go tone up and tone up again but do a minor chord on that one. And there's my shapes there. Cool, so there, there I've got that in my vocabulary that I can pull out in, um, in any different context there, any different song. Uh, finally, I'll show you a melodic lick. It was a piano player from the Doobie Brothers. And basically, it was signed, sealed, delivered by Stevie Wonder. So that's the chord progression. And then he did this cool piano solo. And when I heard that the first time, I was like, oh, what's that? What's that? And look, I've heard this riff a few times in other songs, but it really stood out to me for some reason, this one. And it was a double stop with a six on top of the scale. And once I learned that, I, I love that one. If you've heard my double stops video, you'll know how much I love doing double stops uh, with the six on top. So once I heard that one, I chucked it in my jazz standards. but you get the idea. Uh, I chucked it in um, in soul charts, so say Mustang Sally. Um, for example there. So yeah, there's three different techniques that I've picked out out of random songs and I've adapted them to other songs. So that's the name of the game. You're building this whole box of tools that you can pull out in any moment and yeah, chuck it in your repertoire. So you're learning the skills, the techniques, rather than the actual notes of the particular song. So when you learn a piece, don't just learn it note for note and move on. Actually think, oh, that was a cool way they did that chord inversion there. I wonder if that would apply to the next piece. Or, I really like that little uh, leap melody there. I've never done that with my hands before. Could I do something like that in a, in a different piece, in a different genre? When you're learning something, find out what's actually going behind the scenes so you can add those tools to your toolbox and apply it to the next piece that, that rolls on. Hope you found this tip helpful. If um, this resonated with you, this um, tip actually fits in well with the uh, compounding uh, practice habits tip that I had um, in an earlier video. So. I'll put a, a link to that one um, at the end of this video here. Alright guys, thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next video.